Hi everybody, Kira here with Polymer Clay TV and today I am going to show you how to make this adorable little open top cup. This is intended for my bobby pins and little hair things that always run away on my dressing table, but you can make one for anything. You could put your um, vitamins in there so you remember to take them. You could do all kinds of fun things with um, with this little guy and he's so easy to make with just a couple of tools. So let's get started. For this project we're going to use souffle clay. This is Sculpey souffle. The colors I have here are Mai Tai and Royalty. I am going to bring it all together with a third color. In this case it's going to be some Perlex and this is Antique Copper. I'm using the Flowers in the Garden stamp set from Polymer Clay TV and the graduated set of 10 circle cutters. These are really nice. We're going to make this box out of those. So they come in this plastic container to keep them in, which is pretty cool. And I always have these on my desk. These are part of the metal stamping set. Uh, these are some of my favorites. And then I have my rubber tip tool set because your fingers can't always do what the rubber can do. Step one is deciding on the size of your box. And you're gonna need two cutters. One of them for the sides of the box and one for the top and bottom. So I picked two that are closest together in size and I am going to be influenced by the fact that I want to put this cherry blossom on top of the box so I'm going to pick a um, two cutters close in size one bigger than the other that will fit whatever design I want on the top so for this one these are the two that I picked which are the fourth and fourth and fifth out of the set. And if you want to know the sizes, this one is one and three quarters of an inch and then the bigger one is two inches. This is the easy part actually. We're going to roll out and condition the clay. So I'm going to use purple for the bottom and top and the Mai Tai for the sides. And all I did is condition it and roll it to a number two setting, which is still thick, but it's not the thickest on my machine. And then I'm just going to square up the edges. On this piece, because this is going to be my sides of the box piece. And here I'm going to go ahead and cut off a square edge there, set my pieces to the side, and start wrapping this around here. And I'm going to be flush with the bottom of the cutter. And then when I get to where they bump into each other. You can just press that a little bit and unroll it and it gives you a line to cut. If you didn't if you didn't get it perfect, you can go ahead and try again. That's Sometimes you stretch the clay differently each time you roll it around. There we go. So now I'm just going to smooth the seam and I'm going to notice that I'm a little taller here. So what you can do is just go right back around. For that I like to kind of just roll my form. And take off those little extra pieces. until you come back around the other side and you're flush again. And 
at this point I'm not going to be overly concerned. I do want it to be pretty much the same going all the way around, but I'm not going to be worried if it's not completely the same. What I am going to spend a little time on is the seam. So you can meld it together with your fingers. And you want to kind of push and smooth. And then the rubber tools do a really good job of finishing it up. Okay, and you do want the clay to come all the way to the bottom so that when you cut out your bottom piece and set it on your tile, then when you set this on top of it, it's going to fit really well. So before I set that down, I'm going to go ahead and give it some texture and designs. So if you have small stamps, this is it's really fun to just start designing the sides of your box with whatever you've got. If you want to just go for it with your own sort of textures. So I really love this chisel head for that. Sort of just adding leaf-like shapes, lines, chevrons, stuff like that. If you're a more geometric person. The sharp, sharp edge of this makes a really good geometric design. And just keep going till you have a design that you like. So at this point I finished putting patterns all over the outside rim of my box and now you get to decide what the bottom is going to look like and I decided that I'm going to impress my little flower into the bottom. Now this is not a cutter, it's a stamp. So you don't want to go all the way through the clay with it. You want to just kind of make a three-dimensional stamp with it. And I'm going to decide after I bake this whether I want it to be a box or a little cup. Um, I've made boxes before, but I'm feeling like maybe, you know, I, I made a lotus tray. You can go back in time and look on our um, channel for that, for my little makeup area. And I, as I'm looking at this, I'm feeling like maybe I want to put my bobby pins in it. And in that case, they would stand up and I wouldn't want to put a cover. But if you wanted a cover, you could make two of the larger circles so I'm going to reserve my judgment on whether I'm going to bake the cover or not, or just use it like a little open bin. So before I bake this piece right here, I am going to use my Prolex and highlight the design with this antique copper color. And if you've seen me do Perlex before, you know that I like to dip my finger and knock off the excess into the cap because I hate it when I get big clumps of Perlex on my pieces because it's hard to get that off if it get, goes in the wrong spot. So I prefer to dip and tap. That way I also feel like I'm not wasting it, so I'm tapping it back into the cover and it'll get reclaimed when I put the cover back on. So I'm not going to put Perlex on the bottom because that is what's going to stick it to its little bottom part there. And then I am also going to put Perlex down here on the flower so that when you look down inside the cup 
you see that pretty flower. Okay, and then we're just going to attach gently the cup to the base by pressing. And I'm going to bake it like this. So what's going to happen here, and you can scoop this up off your surface and turn it over and gently press. Make sure that you're making contact all the way around but not pushing it in because I'm not trying to cut it out. I'm just trying to lay it on there. And what's going to happen is when this comes out of the oven immediately, while everything is still warm, I'm going to pick it up and twist it out. If you wait too long, your cutter could kind of get trapped inside and you'd have to bake it again to warm everything up and be able to pull it out. So this is going in the oven and I'll see you in 30 minutes. Here we are, still warm, maybe even a little hot out of the oven, so be careful. Lift that up. I'm not going to grab it directly by the metal because I do think that's probably too hot for me to touch. And as the heat dissipates a little, now I can really grab it. And I can see it coming up from inside, so just be gentle. until you can wiggle it right out. That's so cute. It's perfect, just as it is. I think I'm going to leave it as an open top and uh, maybe use some of my other decorating tools like, hang on, let's need to pop this open. Like some Gilder's paste to finish off this top edge because, you know, before baking I wasn't completely sure what I felt like doing, so there are ways to come back and decorate what you've got after the fact. So we'll just do that to decorate the top and maybe a little around the bottom edge here now that I'm looking at it. This would have been more difficult to do with the Pearl X, but it's easy after it's baked to do it like that. With something that'll just instantly dry, like the Gilder's Paste. So there it is, all done. And you can see inside to the little flower in the bottom of the cup. I hope you enjoyed this week's Polymer Clay TV, and come on back next Wednesday for a new tutorial.